I'm getting very close to finishing this bike. Uh, just sorted some um, electrical stuff out, getting the light switch uh, sorted out. We'll go into that a bit later perhaps. But I've got to do the ignition timing because I had the left hand side casing off which meant the pickup was removed. So one of the first things we've got to do uh, is get the crank timed correctly. So you can see in there there's a little boss between the clutch release arm and the flywheel with a dimple in it. And then on the edge of the flywheel, and particularly if I move the lighting about a bit, see if we can pick that up, um, is an arrow and above it it says PMS1. And that's the uh, top dead centre for the front cylinder. But of course we've got to make sure it's actually on the compression stroke. So I've got the rocker cover off and both rockers have got the free play in. That's also the position you'd use for adjusting the valve clearances. Now this isn't the only way to time the engine, or rather I should say there are two different ways to time these engines depending on whether they've got an electric start or not. Um, this is the um, the machine style flywheel, the, the earlier narrow flywheel, and there's a cast flywheel which has got some little bits of finning on the back. If it hasn't got the drum for the starter motor, you time it the same, you time it at the back. I just went and actually checked the, uh, I've got a genuine factory handbook for a 250 twin, uh, and from 81, and they, they're still using this timing up. If you've got the electric start on, you've got a drum that's basically an extension of this, um, this washer. Um, and you know, take, you'd have to take the whole casing and start motor and off and everything to be able to do the timing. So what they do instead, they've got a plug up here on the electric start case and you use the centre line of the camshaft as the equivalent of your dimple and the marks on the flywheel obviously your, your PMS1 mark rather than being around here would be up here. And parts do get swapped around so um, you know, I've seen electric start flywheels that have had the, the starter drum machined off so that they um, look like the, the, the cast version of this. Um, I've seen flywheels that have had both sets of marks on it because people just like to have them at the top. Um, so you know, you, you, you can um, have, have some issues and, and have to work through them. Um, but. Uh, you also get another way of having a little bit of a check, uh, but definitely having got top dead center. And of course you can always take the spark plug out, put a rod down and check what is actually top dead center and, and see which is the appropriate position for the mark. But once we're top dead center here, then we've got to come and have a look at the pickup. And first thing, if the rotor has got to be on the right way around, it will go on 180 degrees out, and that ain't going to work. So, with the engine compression stroke on the front cylinder, the cutout should be on the back at about that sort of, I don't know, four, half past four position. And there is in there, let's see, can we? get in there, oh yeah that's fairly clear, there's an arrow moulded into the ignition pickup and then there is a line um, stamped in to that little piece of casting there that shows your static uh, timing marks so that's always a good starting point that should get you uh, somewhere near to being able to start the engine and uh, so I've got to put the uh, the lock nut back on there, and then we should be in a uh, an appropriate position to start the engine. And then once the engine's running and has, and has got warmed up, uh, we can put a strobe on it and and actually check the uh, the full advance timing using the mark on the flywheel.